I'm in a high and I and I'm having fun. I'm actually having fun. That's because this is the new i30N and it's a hot hatch to rival the Golf GTI, Seat Leon Cupra and Honda Civic Type R. The i30N starts from £25,000, but I wouldn't get it. That's because for £28,000, you can get the i30N Performance and it has an extra 25 horsepower. It also gets a limited slip differential, a sports exhaust and some extra bracing, among other things. And your inner child will really enjoy one of those particular upgrades, as I'll demonstrate now. Right then, I've got the exhaust in its sportiest setting. Tunnel ahead of me, window down. Let's make some noise. <laughs> yeah, it sounds pretty good. The i30M Performance has a 2.0-litre turbo engine with 275 horsepower and can do 0 to 60 in 6.1 seconds, apparently. OK, so I've got some specialist timing gear fitted up here. I'm going to put the car into first gear, into N mode. It'll go to launch and I'll release the clutch. Come on, bog down a bit there. But we're away now. And it's flying! That's the 60. Let's see what it did. What did it do? Well, I timed the car at 0 to 60 in 6.6 .6 seconds. Not bad. And don't worry about my launch. The N has a toughened clutch and a strengthened short shift gearbox. And that brings us on to the N in the car's name, which is actually a nod to the fact it was developed at the Nürburgring and conceived in Namyang, Korea. So, does it mean the i30N has Namyang style? Ah. It's a little bit embarrassing. Now, in my opinion, the normal i30, while smart looking, it's a little bit anonymous. The upgrades on this one, though, help it stand out. I do like the look of it. The blue paint, that works. Now, you don't have to have it. There are other colour choices, but I highly recommend it. At the front, you've got a deep, sporty bumper with a splitter that's got some red piping on it. There are some vents here, and they do actually have a job. They send air, cool air, over the brakes to help cool them down. On the performance version, you have 19-inch alloy wheels, 18-inch on the standard N car. The 19-inch wheels come with Pirelli P0 tyres, which have been specifically developed with this car in mind. Look, it's even got a little HN logo to signify that. Now, the car sits lower than the normal i30, and you've got some side skirts, so it looks like it's hugging the road. Though they're made out of cheap, well, cheap matte black plastic. I'm not sure they're going to discolour with a bit of time. Could look a bit cheap. There's these little winglets here to aid aerodynamics. Now, moving around to the back, you've got the obligatory hot hatch roof spoiler, but it's not too big, it's not too garish. There's a triangular high-level brake light up there, it's quite cool. Moving low down, there's a deeper bumper than the normal i30, and it's got this integrated rear diffuser, though I don't know what kind of diffusing this does, because it's all kind of like filled in. They just have some nice red piping. And of course, there's twin tail pipes. So what do you think of the design? I want you to click up there and have your say. Do you like it, or are you not that impressed? Being based on the i30, the N has plenty of space for people and their stuff. While up front, there's all the usual Hyundai common sense. I don't think you're going to climb this car and go, wow, this is amazing. It's more just, yeah, it's all right. It doesn't quite have the, the style of a Golf GTI, nor the quality, but it's good enough and there's a few sporty bits and pieces about the place. The sport seats do stand out though, even if they aren't from a famous brand like Recaro. In fact, this non-name theme continues elsewhere. The i30N has some very big brakes, but Hyundai haven't gone and spent a lot of money on some Brembo setup or some other brand. They've done their own in-house to save cash, but they're still big and they have plenty of performance. That's how they're keeping the cost down. All this has allowed Hyundai to spend cash on things which actually improve how the car drives. Now, we can all agree that added stiffness is a good thing, and it's the same with performance cars. That's why Hyundai has added some extra bracing underneath the end chassis. And if you get the performance version, you get this added brace bar here in the back for even more stiffness. Now, if you're wondering how you're going to carry a fridge freezer in here, don't worry, you can remove this just by undoing a few bolts. And it's this kind of customizability that continues throughout the i30N. One thing I love about this car is the fact that you're free to set it up exactly as you want it. You can alter the engine, the rev matching, the limited slip differential, the exhaust sound, then the suspension, the steering, and the electronic stability control. So you have it exactly, like I say, as you want it. There are around 2,000 different combinations, so I haven't quite sussed out which one I like the best yet. But that's besides the point. 
I'm free to do exactly what I want. Most manufacturers just don't let you do that. There are, of course, some preset modes, though the only two you need are Normal and N, which is for maximum attack. So then, let's see just how well the i30 attacks some corners. This steering on this guy, it's really sharp, it's really precise, and you put your foot down as you exit a turn, and you can feel that diff hook up, and it kind of drags you around the corner as it sends power to the outside wheel, like here. Uh, then, on the power, <laughs> hey! And it does, it, it makes this car feel playful, also, if you go into a corner, you can brake late. You've got loads of feel through that brake pedal. They may not be Brembo's, but as far as I can tell, doesn't matter. And because that engine, so it doesn't really have that much lag, you're always pretty much on boost when you're out the other end of the corner. It does help that the gear shift is nice. So the gear shift, it's, it's quite heavy, but it's solid and it's short and it is precise. It's very precise and the rev matching, I've got to tell you this about the rev matching. So, if you don't like it, if you don't like it, you turn it off using a button on the steering wheel. That simple. Now there's something really clever about the adaptive dampers. You can't just make them stiffer or softer. When you go into a turn, they actually provide more resistance at the outer wheel, so that minimizes your body roll. Likewise, under braking, they'll provide more resistance on the front of the car as you're braking to stop it diving. There is one thing, maybe, 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 the engine can do with more power. It's, you know, you get this in a straight line race with a Civic Type R with, you know, it's 320 horsepower and you're gonna feel somewhat inadequate. But yeah, look at this really tight corner. <laughs> you can hear the tires just chirping away. <laughs> I've never laughed before in a Hyundai. Well, not in a positive way anyhow. Now all this would count for nothing if the i30N was an absolute pain to live with every day. But thankfully, it's not. So I've got the suspension in its sportiest setting. I'm on this terrible bit of road. It's almost like off-roading and it's torture. But I can press this button, slacken the suspension right off and... It's way better. I can, I can drive on this. And it's awful, this service is terrible. What a difference. And this sums up the i30N. It's one of those rare occurrences where a car is greater than the sum of its parts. Now, if you're in the market for a Golf GTR, you're probably not going to look at this i30N. But everyone else who wants a good, solid, all-round hot hatch definitely should, because it's the complete article. You know, sometimes with a hot hatch, there's a few bits missing, and you may want to add stuff like a switchable exhaust, a limited slip differential, or some extra bracing, maybe fully customizable driving modes, a short shift gear changer. But this car has all that fitted from the get-go. You don't have to do anything, and it's brilliant fun to drive. You know, the normal i30 is just so mediocre, yet this, it's a revelation. Click on the pop-out banner in the top right-hand corner of the screen or on the link below the video to see how much you can save on a Hyundai i30N. Also, please like and share this video. Click on our logo to subscribe and don't forget to turn your notifications on to be updated when we upload a new video. Also, click on the windows for more videos.